Hello, this is Robert J. C. Bacchus, a coral genealogist, and welcome to episode one, the obligatory beginner genealogist video. <laughs> exactly is the Socorro genealogist? Well, I was raised in Socorro, New Mexico and have deep roots in that town going back 200 years. I've been researching my genealogy and the family history of the people of Socorro for over 20 years. I wish to share my expertise in research for those who might wish to explore their own genealogy. This series will be specific to Socorro, but many of the techniques that I will teach you can be applied to any type of genealogical research. So, without any further ado, let's learn some genealogy. The first thing you should do is write down what you know about your family. Don't worry if you don't know much. Details will help you focus on what is important. Often we only know the first names or even just nicknames. That's okay, write that down too. For example, the, per, the example to the right, the person knows that his grandmother's name is Pancha. Now, I know that Pancha is a nickname for Francis, but he may not know that. So write that down. He might find out later that that's important. Even the smallest bit of information may give you a clue later on. You should always start with yourself and go backwards. That would be you, your parents, grandparents, etc. Then write down information about cousins, uncles, and aunts, etc. Again, include details that may be important. Interview your siblings, cousins, aunts, and uncles, and grandparents about themselves and the people they knew. Do a little research beforehand. Was your uncle a soldier? Ask him questions about his service. How about your grandmother? What was it like being a teacher 50 years ago? More importantly, Ask them about the people who have already passed along. What do they know about their parents and grandparents? Did their family come from a specific place? Were there any tragedies in the family? And how did they react to specific historic events? Record your interview and take notes. Make sure to write down who you interviewed and where and when. The easiest way to record either audio or video is to use a smartphone. Always get permission to record beforehand and let the person you are interviewing know what you are going to do with the recording. For example, if you wish to put it on YouTube, please let them know ahead of time. They may not want you to do that. Ask to make copies of photographs and documents that your relatives might have. You can use your smartphone to take photos of these items. There are apps that you can use that can create better looking documents such, such as PDFs and will store them on your phone. You may also purchase a portable scanner and use it with your computer. Again, let your relatives know what you are using the photos and documents for and get specific permission before publishing them on, in a book or online. File away paper documents and physical photographs that you collect store and organize digital copies. And most important, back up your information. The cloud is your friend. However, be careful where you back it up into and make sure that it is password protected and not easily accessed by others. As you begin collecting names and other information, you'll want to save the information on a genealogy database. There are a number of companies that produce these programs, including Roots Magic, Family Tree Maker, and Legacy Family Tree. Make sure that whatever program you use that has JetCom as its base program. If you have JetCom, you can transfer your data from one program to another. Upload your data to the cloud periodically so that you do not lose all that work that you've done. This is an example of a genealogy database. This particular uh, database is Roots Magic. Um, again, you can choose any sort of program that you wish, 
This is one that I personally like the best. Um, and you can purchase these for 20 to $30. It's not terribly expensive. And once you have it, you can enter in countless amounts of information. I have thousands of people in this database. Uh, this is a relative of mine by the name of Juan Jose Montoya and his wife, Sarah Sanchez. As you can see, this shows Juan Jose and his parents. And if I had Sarah's information about her parents, I'd have that too. Has their birth and marriage uh, dates, could also have their death dates if I had that information. And down here are their children. And I can create a pedigree chart that looks like that, that shows uh, how far uh, that, that it, their family goes back. And that's all information that I personally inputted, okay? And as you can see, I have all kinds of records here, including birth, baptism, census records, marriage records, and so forth. And with every record, I have a source. And as you can see here, for instance, I got this from the 1930s U.S. Census of Pima County, Arizona, and so forth. This citation, this footnote, I can use in creating um, a, uh, a document that I can later uh, present to, to others. For instance, I can make a report. Let's do ancestors of uh, this person. So I'm looking for narrative reports. And I'm going to do ancestors only. Actually, ancestors and children. And I'm going to go, let's say, nine generations. And I can click this and just give it a few minutes. And now I have a report that I can use for... Uh, the ancestry of this person, and it can go as far back as I have information. Again, this is information that I've actually added to um, this, uh, this database. So it's not coming up automatically. You have to actually add this information onto here. And I could like do a pedigree chart, for instance. Okay. There's a pedigree chart for, uh, Juan Jose, or I can even do a family group sheet that shows his entire, uh, his, his family, him, his wife, his parents, uh, etc. Okay, and has end notes here. Again, uh, and I'm going to stress this in a little bit later here, it's very important to cite your sources, to show where you get your information. So let's go ahead and talk about that. I cannot stress this stronger, but at the very beginning of your research, cite your sources. Get into the habit of doing this because, trust me, it will be a headache, huge headaches, if you don't cite your sources. You won't know where you got your information for. When people ask you where you got the information, you won't know. So please cite your sources immediately as you begin. You can use any type of citation math method. It really doesn't matter as long as it's giving the basic information so that someone can actually find where you got the information, where you got your data. Okay. Genealogy databases have forms which you can create source templates that you can use on numerous pieces of, da of data. For example, uh, I have a number of pieces of data, a number of facts that have to do, do with a 1930 census. So I have a 1930 Socorro County census template that I can use over and over and over again and put those specific pieces of information, such as the name of the people and the various uh, cities, because it's not all Socorro. Sometimes it's Luis Lopez, sometimes it's San Antonio. But I can put that information into that template and then attach it to uh, a piece of information 
um, you know, a birth date, uh, a name, that sort of thing. So, yes, please cite your sources and make sure to write it on the back of any piece of paper that you have, uh, that any document that you have that you need to use. Now, don't do it on any original documents, but copies of documents and such. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep your eye out for many more videos to come. Thank <laughs> you.